Hi, it's David from Simply Workshops and I'm here to share six key steps that will help you plan a better workshop or meeting. Note that I may use the word workshop as I describe the approach. However, it can be applied equally to meetings and I think everyone should try and turn their meetings into more of a collaborative workshop where possible. I'm excited to share the approach which is based on the POISED methodology. I'll start with the high level view and then we'll dive into a bit more detail on each step. It's designed to actually mitigate the reasons why workshops and meetings fail to produce outcomes and also importantly tap into that wonderful collective intelligence from those that are attending. Let's start off first of all, many of today's workshops and meetings fail because of lack of a defined or understood purpose. So the P in poised is about being clear on the purpose. Moving on to the O, the O is about the outcomes. And this is about being specific about what everyone will achieve by the end of the workshop or meeting. The I in poised is about identifying questions that need to get answered in the workshop. And if we get these questions answered, that will deliver the outcomes you're seeking. And it's all very well having those questions, but if you don't have the right people there to answer them, then your workshop or meeting's gonna become unstuck. So S is about identifying the stakeholders and attendees that you need to attend the workshop. Next, we've got E, and that stands for exercises. Today, many workshops or meetings often descend into long-winded, unstructured discussion, and exercises mitigate these, give everyone a voice, enable you to pull on the skills of everyone attending, pull on their skills, knowledge, experience, and you can use that to answer those identified questions that will get you to those outcomes. And the final step is D for a detailed plan. And this is what makes your workshop or meeting really robust. It leaves you feeling confident and relaxed to facilitate it. Through the poised method, you will have the confidence to achieve more significant outcomes from your workshops and meetings. So starting with the P, again, this stands for purpose. And this is probably one of the main issues in, in many workshops and meetings. People aren't really totally clear on the purpose of that, and that's really fundamental. And if you don't have a clear purpose, people are gonna become disengaged, or even worse, leaving, feel leaving totally drained. So define the why, why are you having the workshop? You should be able to communicate this in one or two sentences, absolute max. Another major issue that in workshops in particular is that they're often seen as isolated events and they don't take into account the bigger picture, such as the organizational strategy or the strategy of your customer, if you're working with your customer or partner. So at this point, check how your workshop purpose fits into that bigger picture of your organization or your partners, customers, suppliers, etc. So whoever you're intending to invite to the workshop, whatever its purpose, make sure it fits into the bigger picture. So now that we've got our purpose defined in one or two sentences, let's think about outcomes next. Workshops and meetings that don't achieve anything by the end of them are really soul destroying. Stop and think about what this is doing to people's mental health. I've actually not found any studies on the mental impact yet, but you can be sure it's not good. Well, in terms of cost, there are cost estimates, and in the US alone, unproductive meetings and workshops are estimated to cost up to 283 billion. So a significant cost from unproductive meetings and workshops. So what we need to do is define the outcomes. Tangibly, what are the attendees gonna achieve by the end of the time spent in the workshop? Being clear on the outcomes is essential, so take time to think about it. Look back at the purpose you've created for your workshop, and then start by imagining the end of your workshop. What does success look like? If you're asked to run a workshop, ensure you have a picture of what good looks like from the stakeholder who's asked you. And when defining those outcomes, they're gonna be quite specific and tangible. You're gonna have use certain words like agree, define, create, share knowledge on, to be able to. And where applicable, try even and include some metrics. And if you're stuck with defining the outcomes, start using words like how to, or how can we, or how would we, to help your brain come up with possible outcomes. You know, an example of an outcome would be 
How could we create a detailed plan which we can execute that will reduce customer wait times by 10%? That's an example of a, an outcome for a customer service organization. And people are gonna eventually forget what is said and done at the workshop, but they're not gonna forget how it made them feel. So as well as thinking about measurable and quantitative outcomes, think about how you want people to feel. Some people's personality types are actually more about feeling before thinking. For example, in a workshop with partners or customers, do you want them to feel confident that you're the business partner of choice? Or if it's your own team, do you want them to feel a sense of progression or shared purpose or trust? So just a note, consider feelings. Intangible outcomes can be accounted for when you're selecting the workshop environment, the exercises you're gonna use. You know, the simple act of grouping people into groups of two who don't know each other is gonna improve that sense of connection during an exercise. So we've got covered defining the purpose of the workshop, those one or two sentences that enable clarity for everyone as to why they're attending. And then we looked at defining some specific outcomes from the workshop. So now we're on to identify questions. In most cases, you're bringing people together to jointly learn, discover, create something or solve a problem. So next, spend some time thinking about the questions that need to get answered in the workshop. And just to make this clear, let's use an analogy to help understanding. We can think of the purpose being like the foundation of a house. We can think of the outcomes being like the finished walls of the house. However, questions act like the bricks and mortar that allow you to create the walls. So think about the questions that need to get answered to get you to your outcomes. And as we move forward in the uh, poised approach, you're going to actually use exercises to answer those questions in the most efficient manner. So it's really worth taking time to think about questions that need to be answered that will get you to your outcomes. To help you form the questions, a great method is the five W's and the H, and you can use that to help stimulate coming up with those questions. So for every outcome you're looking to achieve, you can cycle through questions like why, why are things they are the way they are today, for example? What, what are the knowns? What are the unknowns that need to be discovered? Where, where did this happen? When, when did it happen? When did it start, etc.? Who, who's responsible? Who needs to action it? And then how, which is how does it help? How does it work? So just using those five W's and H to help you come up with questions that will, that if answered, will help you achieve those outcomes. And next we're on to stakeholders, which is the S in poised. Now, many workshops fail because the best people needed to solve the problem or create insights or create the solution aren't there. And also you could possibly have the other end of the scale where you've got the wrong people. And these could be people who will add no value. They may float in, don't bring any positive energy and actually disrupt or slow things down. So firstly think, who can help answer these questions that you've identified for your workshop? Remember, it's by answering these questions that you'll get to your workshop outcomes. Here's a super tool that I've put together. It uses power, interest and knowledge on two axes. It's called a stakeholder mapping tool. If we start off, we've got critical players in the top right hand corner. These are people who've got either interest in the workshop or power to help deliver on that bigger picture outcome, which the workshop's part of. They could sponsor, for example, provide budget to pay for the outcomes. And if you don't have anyone attending your workshop in this square, then consider it's probably not worth having as the outcomes are unlikely to progress. And then on the opposite end of the scale, we've got people in the bottom left. These uh, folk are, I've called them ap apathetics. They're gonna usually generate noise, potentially be disruptive with no constructive input. However, sometimes you can't prevent them from attending. So you'll have to deal with them through structured exercise and careful facilitation skills. In the other two boxes, you'll potentially have influential attendees that are not that interested, and I call them important players, and you'll want to try and move them into the green box if possible and leverage the power that they have to help drive the outcomes. Similarly, 
you'll have knowledgeable supporters. And these are people who are interested but don't really have necessarily the power to help drive things forward. You still want these people there, but they may need to be managed carefully. And a top tip is really don't just think inside your organisation. Think about your network, think about partners, suppliers, customers, where relevant. Think about others that you can bring into your workshop to help answer those questions. Now we move on to step five, the exercises or the E in poised. And by exercises, I mean any activity that you're going to do in your workshop, including pre-workshop exercises, introductions, icebreakers, group exercises, closing the workshop and even post-workshop exercises. Exercises leverage efficient tools to help answer the questions and they provide a framework to guide stakeholders and attendees, helping extract and shape their thinking collaboratively and helping them reach conclusions in the most time efficient manner. They also enable democratic decision making rather than those who shout the loudest and that's all too common in many of today's meetings and workshops. And importantly, they also prevent unstructured discussion. It's one of the most common issues in today's meetings and workshops. And depending on the organization's culture, certain people may posture and position themselves in front of others. You might also have people who, what I call, think talk. And these attendees speak aloud as they form their viewpoints. You don't actually need to do that, but it's just their natural preference. And if you're someone who thinks before, you know, thinks to form an opinion before sharing it, then think talkers are your worst nightmare. Or you may have in a situation where an extrovert takes over, forcing their opinion on everybody else. And you know that other people have good ideas, but they're not comfortable expressing them because possibly they're more introvert. So exercises will help capture everybody's ideas through tools like digital or physical sticky notes. Even a simple exercise that involves conducting discussion in pairs rather than in an open forum is more likely to enable those individuals' ideas to be heard. So think about what exercises, in addition to introductions and icebreakers, the most typical types of exercise that you'll use in your workshop to help answer the questions are exercises to gain or share knowledge. You know, they are great for, for example, creating contextual knowledge before going on to try and brainstorm and solve a problem. You might have an issue or problem identification analysis exercise. You might have an exercise to generate ideas or create new solutions. You will also use exercises to make democratic decisions, prioritize or converge on the correct issues to solve or the best solutions to implement, exercises to check and ensure you've got consensus if you're working with a team, and exercises to define something in more detail, for example, using a simple template. So those are the typical types of exercises that you can use to ensure that your questions get answered in the most efficient manner. The final step, the D in Poised, stands for Detailed Plan. You're going to become a workshop architect. Without a plan, you're more likely to face disaster. And I really want everyone to feel relaxed like this before their workshop or meetings. So having a plan will help you relax. Worry eats into your energy as a facilitator and the results are less effective workshops and hence outcomes. However, you can feel calm before and during your workshop because you've planned and prepared. I find having this workshop plan completed is the point at which I feel relaxed and confident, even for the most significant high stakes events. Let's explore the key information you should include in your workshop or meeting plan. This is an example of a detailed planner that we've, a tool that we've included in our workshop bonus pack and also as part of our complete course, which automates the planning and the times. But you can copy the headings and let's just focus in on the headings and put them in any worksheet. So what you're gonna have is the name of the activity, the start time, the amount of time you're gonna spend on that exercises, exercise, the end time, and then detail about the exercise. You know, which questions is it gonna help to answer? And this is just cross-checking that you're gonna get to your outcomes the process that you're going to go through for that exercise. So you're going to define the steps of the process, you know, asking people to 
drop into groups of two or sending them out to breakout rooms for online workshops. It even covers the materials required, for example, if you're planning a face-to-face -face workshop and a little bit of a project planner of any key outstanding actions required to make that exer exercise work. You'll find that having this detailed plan in place will enable you to relax before your workshop. You can bring it into your workshop and use it to work through to stay on track and manage time. This is just a high level introduction to the poised workshop methodology, but hopefully you can take it out, start to apply it in your workshops and meetings to get better outcomes. If you want to subscribe or follow for more, and if you want to improve your workshops significantly, then head over to learn.simplyworkshops.com to see our available courses, and also to subscribe to our newsletter. We promise to respect privacy, we won't spam you, but we will send you useful tips and tricks and information to help you have more productive meetings and workshops. Thanks for your time and all the very best on your workshop journey.